Hey guys, it's uh, Easter Monday. Hope you're all having a good Easter. Uh, today I'm sort of frantically trying to pack my bags. I always leave it to the last minute because uh, tomorrow we're off to Oman to target these yellowfin tuna on top water. I've uh, been looking forward to this for a while. During the COVID times, we haven't been able to get there. So it's been, a, uh, I think it's been three years since we've been targeting the yellowfin on top water over in uh, Muscat, Oman. So finally going back there tomorrow and um, yeah it's been a long time waiting so can't wait to get into it but uh, yeah like I say today it's all about packing the bags and it's a job I hate doing I'm one of these guys that always leaves everything to the last minute and frantically throws everything in a bag so I got 13 days on the water all top water fishing um, uh, and certainly different conditions than we're used to in New Zealand we need to pack sort of you know, uh, you know, pretty sensibly, and, and obviously for the the trip and the conditions. So I thought I'd show you guys, you know, what we're actually taking over there to, you know, hopefully have a successful trip. But I guess when we're, um, you know, packing, sort of break it down to different categories. You know, the first category is obviously going to be all the luggage that you pack everything up in and carry everything there, so you can get it there safely. Uh, you've got all your your computer gear, camera gear, all your electronics. Uh, then you've got your personal safety, personal hygiene, which is really important. So you're travelling in that. Uh, your clothes that you're going to wear, obviously to suit the conditions where you're going. And then probably the most important thing, all your fishing tackle. So um, yeah, let's run through it. Eh? I'll show you what I've got. So you can see here, got everything all laid out on the bench. Pretty much, hopefully it's all in order. The luggage down there. And I've got all my rods ready to go and a camera pole in there as well, that, that gold pole. Um, that we'll be using for our underwater shots. So let's start over here. Probably the most important thing is personal safety hygiene. Uh, got a toiletry bag there. Everything I need in it. Sunscreen. Really love the uh, the skinny sunscreen. I get a um, few allergies from sunscreen, but this stuff seems to be good. It's uh, not so greasy. Don't need a lot of it. Really protects you. In New Zealand, I really only just put it on in the morning, and, it, and it's good. This is probably one of the most important things that we uh, need in Amman because it's it's uh, it's really really hot there. You know we're in the 30 degrees sort of every day, so you know electrolytes or your sachets that you can put into your water bottles while you're out there. I try and have one about 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock each day, and just keeps me hydrated, keeps the energy levels up as well. Um, this is a bit of a game changer. That's the Garmin InReach. Uh, it's got the SOS function on it, which is like an EPIRB. It goes back to a 24-hour um, uh, call center if you're in, in distress or in an emergency. Uh, it's got charts on there. But the great thing about it is it, uh, I've got an app on my phone, so I can actually text message home. Um, when I'm out in the water, it can be 50, 60, 70, 80 mile offshore, or just from you know our apartment that we're going to be living in, uh, what it does, I don't need to get a SIM card when I get there. I can just text with this so my family, you know, know what we're up to. Uh, so it's a really, really good option and a really good um, safety feature as well. So if there's an emergency, I can activate the SOS button. They'll text back what's the problem. And if they can't get hold of us, then they've got, you know, the contact details back here so they can get hold of uh, B or, or, or whoever's on that list uh, to, to check on us. I always take a headlamp. You never know, especially when you're out. You might be a late night coming back in from fishing or power cuts, whatever. A uh, couple of pairs of Smith Sunnies. Good polarised lenses. You know, they're good for your eyes. You can see into the water. And you always have a spare pair. Uh, I take quite a comprehensive first aid kit with me. I've obviously got people to look after when I'm travelling, so I just want to make sure everything's right. So I've got you know, everything from Band-Aids to, you know, your um, Betadine, which is sort of... Really good cream to put on your cuts in the tropics. You know, that pawpaw cream, which I always use, good for the lips. Um, you know, you've got saline solution in there, a lot of different bandages. Um, Steri strips, you know, for patching yourself up. Yeah, so, yeah, pretty comprehensive and uh, enough to sort of get us by in, a, in, a, in an emergency, I guess. Next thing, I guess, we'll move over to here. So I've got all my camera gear. I try to carry it in a hard case. I take this through the airport with me. It's not that big. I mean, we're so lucky now. Everything's really compact. You know, you've got your DJI mic set there. It's your little battery charger for your, you know, your Action 3 cameras, which are, you know, they're tiny. Fantastic little cameras. I've got the waterproof housing on there, which goes onto the, uh, the, the camera pole. 
Hard drives, these are a game changer. They're uh, water resistant and uh, two terabytes, really small. And the Samsung ones are really fast for uploading your content each day. Got my MacBook under there. A whole lot of different mounting options. I like to use the RAM mounts. Uh, they secure, really secure on the on the boat. Uh, this is an unusual thing, but it's uh, if you want to try and get that footage to you know real life, put that in your mouth, and you've got your camera there, so it, it sort of you know obviously brings the viewers to the uh, to the action, so to speak, when you're watching it. This is cool. Um, it's a little uh, USB um, socket, so we can put all our cords in there when we're charging batteries, cell phones, everything at night. And then I've got some, you know, the uh, power adapters as well, battery ch uh, charger for the, for the computer. And then you've got the uh, different sockets there or different you know, USB card reader that you can plug into your laptop. Yeah, so all that just really goes into my backpack. All the mounts go on my bag. And then all the camera gear just gets uh, stowed safely in the Nanook hard case. So it works good. And you're talking about luggage, you know, this is pretty much what I take every, everywhere I go really. I've got my big Tatonka bag, super durable, heavy duty. It's got the wheels on the bottom and uh, the handle goes away. But I've been using that bag now for, I don't know, seven or eight years. And there's been no issues with it. It's probably the best bag that I've ever owned to be fair. Uh, super heavy duty, real heavy sort of canvas sort of material on it. It doesn't rip. Got a bunch of gear here for Sims, you know, little bags organizing all your gear. That's my backpack. Take on that on the plane. Uh, when I'm on the boat, I like to have a dry bag. And there's a few reasons for that. So this is a cool bag, folds up, and I, I keep all my lures, all my fishing gear in there, and all my personal stuff in there. So it stays in that bag for the day. You know, everything's going to get dry. There's nothing worse than, uh, you know, like getting all your hooks rusty your pliers you know getting salt water all over them just trying to keep generally everything as dry as I possibly can but the other thing with having a dry bag is it's actually a good safety feature as well if you dumped everything out of that bag you can now inflate it you know so it can actually act as a, as a buoyancy device as well so it just gives you know an extra flotation if, if you know something bad happens like the boat sinks but a uh, dry bags pretty Awesome piece of kit. You can actually make it into a flotation device as well. So, multi-purpose. Uh, here's my big rod tube, and I've been using this for many, many years. It's the uh, sport tube. If you're in the market for a, a good rod tube, you can't go past these. It's nice and light. It can extend to, to different lengths. Uh, it's just I don't know. It, it's it's not real thick plastic, but the shape of it uh, makes it super, super strong. And very durable and, and like I say I've been using that rod tube now for probably the best part of eight years and you know we're averaging about between you know five to eight different destinations every year and you know, as you can see it's still in one piece which is you know it's just what you want when you're transporting expensive rods and that and then last but not least we've got down here a bunch of uh, rod bags and in this case we've got our um, Stella Real covers as well, just to protect them when they're in our luggage. Don't, whatever you do, take your reels on uh, carry-on luggage. We've had this before where you get, and it's not everywhere, but when you're going through your check-in or your customs and your, you know, your checks and that, some countries, some airlines don't like fishing reels to be taken on as uh, carry-on luggage. Something about the line, uh, they reckon it can be used to strangle people or whatever, but yeah, don't take them on. We've had a few issues in the past where people have had actually uh, Missed their flights because they've had uh, fishing reels uh, in their carry-on, so they've had to go and recheck them in the bags, and they missed the flight. So, it's a little tip for you. We'll go over our clothing. Um, we're going to be fishing in really super warm conditions, 30 degrees. So there's really no need at all to take anything warm. Um, so this is pretty much all I've got. I'll just give a bit of pan down here. I like to wear. Uh, my long fishing pants, these are super lightweight ones by Sims. Um, you really don't even feel like you've got them on. They keep the sun off you, which is the main thing. Uh, so I always have about three or four pairs of those for a trip. They dry out, easy to wash, and they don't really get that stained up. Uh, Solarflex fishing shirts also by Sims. 
super lightweight um, and you know I usually take about four or five of those uh, sometimes I'll take two out in the boat for the day as well especially uh, where we're fishing we're going to be uh, fishing for these big giant yellowfin tuna and sometimes you can get a hell of a lot of blood on you so it's nice to have a bit of a change uh, I've got a good pair of breathable uh, fishing shoes that dry out they're sort of like a mesh I don't know if you can see through there but yeah they're nice and they breathe real heavy duty as well good for your feet a pair of the old flip-flops or jandals a couple of t-shirts uh, i got about three or four pairs of board shorts uh, where we're gone we've got a swimming pool so we can do a bit of swimming and uh, nice to sort of wear a pair of shorts in the evening uh, fishing caps i always take about three away with me um, we're going to be on super fast uh, boats and we do lose a few caps um, especially when you're running in between workups and uh, yeah it's not always good to have a spare so I always take a spare cap on the boat with me for the day also a spare pair of sunglasses I guess uh, we've got a really lightweight towel like I say it's not going to be uh, cold where we're going so I just take these lightweight cotton towels with me good old socks and undies so you got to have those so yeah that's pretty much all the clothing that I have like I say try not to take uh, too much it doesn't get cold at all so uh, there's no point in taking extra gear I do have one top that I want to share with you it's um, I've been testing this um, during, during the summer here especially in the hotter days um, and it's sort of you know some like if you if we're coming in in the evening it does it might get a little bit cooler or you just want a little bit of comfort you check this out so it's a um, it's a breathable fishing shirt it's got a hood on it so you've got your solar flex material down the bottom your chest area but on the top, it's actually just got a little bit of, um, I don't know, spray um, proof, sort of windproof material. So it just gives you a little bit of comfort there uh, if you are running in in the dark. And that's pretty much all we're going to need in, uh, in, in Oman this year um, if we are running back late in the evening. Um, you know, sometimes we, we can be 60, 70 mile offshore. So, yeah, um, if you're in the market for something that, you know, gives you a little bit of comfort but also keeps the sun off you, Keeps you a little bit drier in the wind. Yeah, you want to check one of these out. They're pretty cool. So that's by Sims. Let's get into the fishing gear. I guess this is the most important thing. We're going over there, obviously. Uh, top water fishing for yellowfin fish. This, you know, that we're the fish that we're going to be targeting are going to be anything in that uh, 40 kilo and up to hopefully over 100 kilo. Now, the average size over there is going to be sort of that, you know, 45 to 75 kilo size. So they're, they're reasonably big yellowfin, and you know certainly on top water they're going to be very challenging so I'll just show you, I'll pan around I'll just show you some of the gear that we got here guys so here you go so I've got a whole lot of different leader sizes we're using the uh, Oshier casting leader it's nice and subtle ties up nice uh, and, and you know obviously that subtle leader helps in the casting distance as well so we have anything from 100 pounds uh, 120 140 170 all the way up to 200 pound Probably the um, average size that we're going to be using is going to be around about that 170 or 140 pound size, you know, two and a half meter long leaders. Always take a roll of uh, insulation tape, good for patching up things if we need to on the, on the run there. And actually talking about patching up, I've had problems in the past where, you know, you know someone might take out your guides or, or if you hit something on the cast and you rip a guide out. So this year I'm taking, basically I've got a bunch of different guides that I'm about to get my hands on. Just got some Aerodite, little razor blades and sandpaper and I've got my PR bobbin and I reckon I can, uh, well I know I can, I can put a guide back on as a temporary fix to keep me fishing so I'll get back that night I can actually put um, a guide back on if I need to to keep me in the game. Whole selection of uh, good heavy duty um, split rings. The 10 mouth and the BKK are certainly my go-to ones. They're nice. Look, you can't really see these ones, but they're very slim, super strong. And then I usually have this little case that um, we put over all my split rings, NT swivels as well for your connections. So everything goes in that nice little case, which is sort of semi-waterproof. And I'll keep that in that dry bag. What else have we got? I've got a, oh yeah got these two containers these have been a bit of a game changer in, in the past I keep these on the charter boat as well so keep all the hooks in them you keep them in the separate sizes uh, sort of waterproof uh, you can keep some of your gear in there as well so they're, they're awesome containers. 
So yeah, I like to keep my hooks off the lures when I'm traveling. Um, you know, when we're, you know, I'm only going to have hooks on the lures that I'm actually using at, at the time. So I, at any one stage, I might only have um, two or three lures um, with the hooks on them. And then if I'm going to change out my lures, I'll just change those hooks and put those hooks onto the new lure that I'm going to be using. There's a few reasons. A, I don't want to be reaching into a, into a tackle bag that's got, you know, 15 lures with all their hooks on them. They, and they get tangled. It makes a real nightmare if you're trying to get a, a lure out in a hurry. Uh, but the other thing is hooks are expensive. I, we only use, you know, the best hooks that we can get. Um, I use those BKK Raptors. So I just don't want all my hooks rusting. So, you know, if I've only got about three or four sets of hooks out, um, then, you know, we can keep changing them out and uh, not, not making them all go rusty, so to speak. So as far as lures go, it might look like we've got a hell of a lot, but we've, um, we've got about 13 days uh, of fishing, so we will go through them. Um, last time I was there, and I'll hold this up actually, this was the, uh, the go-to lure for us. So that's the um, Rapala Popper, 170 mil, 140 grams. Last time we were there, uh, I think we fished eight days, caught 52 yellowfin tuna on top water. 36 of them come from these lures. Uh, this was probably one of our favorite colors. Um, they all work, that flying fish color as well is a great one. That nice uh, sort of brown, darker sort of bait fish color. But yeah, the, the um, Rapala popper, fantastic lure, easy to swim and actually you know, very, very cost effective. Uh, we're gonna be using this. In Japan, they've been using it on yellow thin. It's a smaller lure. Um, it's got that casting weight in it, and it's going to be great. Probably, probably load that up with three bar o, um, you know, barbless hooks on that one. Got sort of a more of a pencil popper, the bubble dip from Shimano. That's going to be a great lure. And then we've got, you know, some of our favourites, the HD Orca. Got a bunch of those. This is one of my favourite sort of lures at the moment, especially for kingfish, but it's gonna, it should work pretty good on the yellowfin. That's 140 gram, 240 mil long. That's a wild response. And I've got a few different lures. It's good to mix it up. This is a full throttle. This is a Japanese um, Shimano lure. It's like a skipping lure. A swimming stick bait or a popper's not working. Maybe try this for a bit of an option. Got the um, Hiramasa, this is a big prototype. 220 mil. It's got the flash boost in there. Give that a whirl. And I've got the smaller version in there as well. So. And then we've got a bunch of smaller lures. We do get mahi mahi over there, um, as well as the um, long tail tuna as well. So mix it up with a few smaller lures. You never know, there could be sailfish as well. So, um, little siren lure there. These have been great in the past. These are a classic, the old RAL lure made in New Zealand, they no longer get made. And these are pretty pretty cool too, so there you go. So that's pretty much my selection of lures that I'm taking this year. Got a few carry cases, just to sort of organise everything. I like this one here, this is a great case, it's all, um, it's got holes in it, so you can actually, you know, we use mainly this for this um, case for putting all our lures in, won't have the hooks in there. But at the end of the day, you can just rinse it out. It's great. And then the smaller case for all your tools. And that's all that gear there is pretty much going to go in my Sims dry bag, which I'll better take on the boat each day. So it should work really, really well. This is um, the new Shimano gimbal belt. Fantastic. Got your back support as well. And uh, we've been using that pretty much all year. I've taken it to, in fact, last year I took it to Costa Rica to try out. We caught Blue Marlin and it was fantastic on the spinning gear. Um, casting gloves, got the Oshia casting gloves. I've got three pairs. It gets hot and sweaty, so it's nice to be able to put a fresh set on each day and obviously we can wash them. We've got washing machines in the apartment we're staying in, so I've got a, three pairs of casting gloves. If I'm not fishing and I'm just going to be doing some filming, I've got the um, the Sim Solarflex gloves as well. And they, what they do is they just these gloves are fantastic because 
they keep the sun off your hands, the back of your hands, especially mine, they're getting a bit crusty, but uh, wearing these new sort of breathable material gloves um, certainly makes a hell of a difference. Got the gaiters, keeps your, the back of your neck and your ears, keeps the sun off it. And you combine that with your fishing cap. The good stuff. We've got a full, full uh, selection here of Stellas. We've got the three 14,000s, which is uh, the go-to size. I love the 14,000. It's, it's, it's high speed, which is fantastic for tuna fishing or any topwater fishing. It's a lot more compact, I think, than the 18,000. Still punches out really high drag. But the main reason we use the 14,000s is it's real, real run and gun sort of style fishing. We're, um, you know, we're blasting up to these uh, tuna feeding on the surface and you want a, light, a lightish reel, you know, you start using the bigger 18,000, it, it can be, you know, a lot of reel to swing, especially when you're trying to get these quick casts in, so, yep, 14,000 for us, uh, all three reels have got 80 pound, the blue stuff is the Oshia um, braid, and I've also, on this one here, we've got the uh, Kariki 80 pound multicolour, the more and more I'm going to multicolour for everything, really, it's, I reckon it's great, when you, especially when you're fighting big fish and you can see exactly if you're making or gaining and then I've got the little um, little 6,000 here and that's uh, we're going to use that for mahi mahi or, or you know if you see a sailfish or you know smaller species of fish so we've got the um, Oshia plugger rods I managed to get my hand on a um, P10 uh, I got that, that specially in from Japan and then I've got a couple of P8 so that's going to be my go-to rods really there the P8 and I've basically just taken a spare one over. Plus, I've got a you know I've got a bunch of guys coming to fish with me this year, so it is good to have a spare rod there. You know, if someone you know has an accident. And then, last but not least, I've got the nice lightweight um, PE5, which is a honey of a little setup there. But that's going to be hopefully we're going to catch mahi mahi on that. That'll be fantastic. So these are the new um, Oshia Plugger Limited rods. Absolutely fantastic. And uh, there you go, so that's what we've got. Now, I've got the big job. We're gonna try and get all of that, all of this gear here, into that bag there, a little backpack, and into that rod tube, so. There you go, if you got any questions, leave a comment, and uh, we'll do our best to uh, get back to you. But uh, by the time you're watching this video, we'll pretty much be boarding a plane, uh, flying to Dubai, and then down to Muscat, and getting ready for this, uh, our Omani Yellowfin adventure. We're pretty pumped. In fact, Ips, you know, absolutely excited about it. Can't wait to get back there. We've got some amazing um, skippers. Um, been fishing with Farhad now for many years. He's an absolute legend, and uh, he really knows how to get us on the fish. And these boys, they do it, you know, if they have to run 60, 70 miles a day, they're going to do that, and it's, uh, yeah, they take it to the next level. So we'll keep you updated. We're going to do... Regular posts each day. Hopefully, might be able to get a bit of a live feed going at the marina, show you around. Um, so yeah, stay tuned, stay with us. Um, most of the updates are going to be on Instagram and Facebook. And if you like this video, please subscribe um, and keep up to date with our journey. There you go guys, done. Adios.